The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds or for taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN Worldwide Broadcasting Network production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. Great living, truly great living, is mentally and spiritually alive. The famous British author H.G. Wells, at the age of 18, entered the Royal College of Science, where for a year he lived on the poor pittance of only one guinea a week. But it was one of the happiest periods in all his life. For a year, I went shabbier and shabbier, he later wrote. I was underfed and not very well housed. But it didn't matter to me in the least because of the vision of life. The vision of life which was growing within my mind. I used to run to my lectures, he later wrote. Are you that excited about life right now? Are you that excited about anything? right now. Is there, as H.G. Wells said it, a vision growing in your mind, in your soul, within your heart? Have you found the purpose for which, as a son or daughter of the living God, you were born upon this earth, the purpose for which you were created, brought to be? Nothing in all of life is more exciting and thrilling than the finding of that great spiritual purpose for which you were created. Said Jesus, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And again it is written, as for me and my household, we shall serve the Lord. The ancient author Virgil wrote that the people who seem capable of the greatest accomplishments in their lives are able to do all because they think they can do all. They believe that they can. He correctly identified the source of the greatest human achievement as having its origin in the inner life, the thought, the philosophy, the spiritual life, where the human aspirations, hopes, and idealisms, and longings make contact, sometimes consciously, sometimes unconsciously, with the indwelling fragment of God impinging upon the human mind. It is in seeking above all things the will of God and the wisdom of God for your life and the power of God for the living of your life that the true greatness of life emerges. It begins to have meaning and zest and joy. I read in one newspaper recently that a cemetery on the east coast of the United States had to raise the cost of its burial lots and they blamed it on, quote, the high cost of living. Living is costly. Inflation affects even the cost of dying. But there are millions of human beings on this earth who know the cost of everything but the value of nothing. The great life is the life lived in commitment to values, to supreme spiritual values which are of God, truth and beauty and goodness and the love of God and others. Live your life in the conviction that you personally, you yourself, Whatever name you sign, whatever person you see when you look in the bathroom mirror, you personally are of infinite value to the infinite God, whose spirit, a fragment of infinity, indwells your mortal mind. And it is written, the spirit in man is the candle of God or the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inmost parts. The kingdom of God is within you. On the Eddystone Lighthouse on the English coast are inscribed these words, to give light is to save life under the picture of Dr. Peter Milne on the little New Hebrides island of Naguna are these words, when he came, there was no light. When he died, there was no darkness. The Chinese say it is better to light a candle than to curse the darkness. Where there is fire, wrote Woodrow Wilson, there will be men and women carrying their lamps there to be lighted. Said Jesus of Nazareth, you are the light of the world. A city set up on a hill cannot be hid. But he said, do not put your lamp under a bushel or under a basket or a bucket, but let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You can bring light and love and hope and joy into the lives of human beings. I once talked with an emergency room nurse in New Orleans, Louisiana. She told me that she had worked with over 1,000 patients over the years who had attempted to commit suicide, and she kept a record of what all of these attempted suicides had said in the hospital, and she recounted to me that there was one thing that every single one of them said in one way or another. I didn't have anybody to talk to, or nobody would really talk with me or communicate with me. One of the greatest human needs is for friendship, people to share with and care about, love, communication, 
compassion, concern. God created you to love God and love people, and nothing less than that will ever satisfy your soul and bring real joy in your life. One of the most beautiful statements of faith I've ever read, eloquent in its portrayal of this relationship of a human being to the universe, to the cosmos, and the source of the cosmos to God, is this paragraph written by the statesman and scientist Benjamin Franklin. He wrote, I believe in one God, creator of the universe, that he governs it by his providence, that he ought to be worshipped, that the most acceptable service we can render him is doing good to his other children. There in but a moment's worth of writing is the summation of a faith which if everybody on this planet were to live by it, this world would be by tonight midnight and by tomorrow morning dawn for sure a totally transformed realm. There's a joy in living this way. There's a pervasive, prevailing happiness in living in faith in God. You can always choose that attitude, if you will. Time for a grimsly, terrible parable. There was a certain merchant one time who had a burglary one night. The thieves got away with a big truckload of merchandise, but the next day he was philosophical about it. He said it could have been worse. This week I have everything marked 20% off for a sale. They could have robbed me last week before I marked all that merchandise down. One of the most impressive characteristics of the human mind is its ability to look on the bright side, to hope, to aspire, to have faith, to rise undiscouraged again and again and again after being beaten down or falling down or tripping and going down. The ability to rise up again, multiply hope times persistence, times vision, times idealism, times infinity, and the resulting sum will begin to approximate the power of faith, which is the supreme assertion of the human mind and soul. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is living as if. It is claiming a truth and living as if, as if you were living in a friendly universe governed by a good God who loves you. God has a will for your life and the power for you to carry out that will. New zest and joy, fearlessness of life and fearlessness of death with the certitude of things eternal that life for you shall never really end for you shall go on in a great star trek from here to infinity. One poet has spoken of getting music out of life's remainders, learning to extract melody from the leftovers of life when you get to the end of your rope, tie a knot, and hang on. The latent possibilities are all around you and within you. You can bring them forth into something great. The purest gold goes through the hottest fire. The Russians say a hammer shatters glass, but it forges steel. Calamities shatter some people, but if you will give your life to God, calamities will forge character in your soul. For years, naturalists attempted to prevent all fires in the giant sequoia forests of Northern California, where redwood trees, among the oldest living things on this earth, tower majestically skyward. But it was soon discovered that the seedlings of new trees were not thriving as before, and naturalists have since learned that forest fires are in fact essential to the process of reseeding redwood groves, for fire uniquely prepares the soil for the seeds of new life. Controlled burning in these forests is now an annual procedure. Often the devastating destructions and ravagings of human life are similarly but preparations of the soil of your soul for the seeds of new growth, new potential, new possibilities in your life experience. In staunchness of spirit, refuse to forfeit faith in God. Be certain that trouble only seasons the soil for the seeds of new growth in your life. God loves you. God has a will for your life. And turn to God in this moment. It is written, whosoever calls upon the name, listen to that word, whosoever, that means anybody, that means you, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Turn in faith to God, but do it now. Do not delay. There's a story that's been told for years of a great spiritual revival which swept through Princeton University in New Jersey. And Aaron Burr at that time was a student at Princeton. So he went to the office of the president of the university and he said, Mr. President, I've made up my mind to consider the claims of the teachings of Christ, to consider turning my life to God. But he said, I'd like your advice. What would you say to me to do? How would you counsel me? And the old president of Princeton University gave him this advice. He said, Burr, if I were you, I would 
just wait for a while until all this excitement of this campus revival had subsided and died down, and then you'll have the ability and the time and the leisure to think it out more carefully and not so emotionally as you would at this time. Aaron Burr bowed his head a moment. Then he said, Mr. President, that is exactly what I'll do. And that's what he did, and never again in his life, according to his biographers, did Aaron Burr ever express again any desire to find God or to commit his life to God or to learn to pray or worship or study the teachings of Jesus. It ended for him that day, and he died say his biographers, without a faith in God or hope of heaven. Do not put off this decision, which is before you this moment as you're considering what I'm saying on this worldwide broadcast. Make that decision now, here and now. The matter may never come up again in your mind as clearly as it is before you this moment. You are a son or daughter of God. God has a wonderful will for your life and eternity lying before you and the joy of loving God and loving others in service and a meaningful, joyous life. If you will choose it this moment, it shall be yours by faith. And then write to me. I want to hear from you at Box 3080 Oakhurst, California, 93644. I have free literature for you, which I've written, Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, The Fatherhood of God, The Brotherhood of Man, Life After Death, On Campus, Questions University Students Ask from our On Campus Broadcast Series. Any or all of this, yours free, no cost, charge, or obligation when you write to us at Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. For those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address. That's Box 3080, Oakhurst. O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.